I'm gonna, um, since a few of us did bring up how we're feeling in the bodies and I, I do typically like to have some form of movement, which of course uh, sometimes isn't as easy online. Uh, we'll just do one thing for the neck uh, and I'll say the reason I choose the neck is the rest of the body sort of gets affected by the neck. So there's a bunch of the, the longer fascial sheaths that run through the body, they all connect here. So if we can keep the neck a little, you know, less crunchy, it'll actually help the rest of the body as well. Uh, I'll show what I'm gonna ask us to do so you can see it. And the, the last part does involve sticking one's tongue out. You can do it, you can skip it. Uh, if you're online and don't want that to be on video, you know, feel free to uh, pause your video as well. But we'll start by just, you can take your head and tilt over to one side, either left or right, it doesn't matter. Well, let's, actually, let's pick one side. So let's, I'll tilt towards the left. And then take the right arm and you're gonna just stretch the right arm out to about 45 degrees. So it's sort of out, reaching out towards your hip. There we go. So that's just step one. Some of us may already be feeling this. If you're feeling a stretch along the side of the neck there, that's great. If you feel like you can take a little more, you take the left hand. The left hand's gonna come and rest either just on the top of your head. For some of us, it, you may actually be able to, um, you're just letting the weight of this left hand rest on the head. So I'm not yanking my head down. It's just a sort of, dead weight on the head. There we go. And so imagine, keep your attention on the surface layer of the skin. Feel like you're stretching out just that top layer of skin. Again, so you may be getting a good stretch here and you're comfortable staying here. If you wanna take it a little further, Take that right hand, bring the right fingertips to that right shoulder. And so that sense of really stretching. So imagine you're pulling, you're just gently pulling your fingers apart, but it's like you're gently stretching the skin. Just check in with the shoulders, especially that left shoulder. Make sure it's not creeping up towards your ear. And then from here, if you feel like you can take a little more juiciness, so you're gonna stick your tongue out and then let the tongue hang down. So you, you might need to look at me. And so for some of us, then you, you'll start to, it'll start to engage a slightly different part of the muscles in the neck. And then to come out, come out nice and slow because we've been in it for a bit. It'll be a pretty intense stretch. So if you had your tongue out, bring the tongue out first, bring the tongue back first. Release the right hand, let the right hand come down. Gently release the left hand. If you want, you can even use the left hand to slowly push the head back up to center. And just take a moment, pause there and just feel the left side and the right side. And just notice any differences. So nothing good or bad per se about the differences, so just noticing. All right, so we'll go into the other side. So let your head drop over towards the right, right ear moving towards the right shoulder. Again, just to let the shoulders roll back and extend the left arm out you know, 45 degrees down towards the ground or the seat that you're on. Pausing here, if that feels good. If you want a little more, take the right hand up just as a weight on the head.
Just check in with your breath. Make sure you're still breathing. If we want a little more, bring the left hand to the left shoulder. Just stretching the skin. So imagine you're from the left shoulder up towards the left ear as if we're stretching the skin out. And then the last juicy part, if we want, just sticking the tongue out, letting it hang down. So on the right side, hanging down towards the ground. Let's relax the shoulders. And then slowly coming back. So first drawing the tongue in. Let the left hand and arm relax. Let the right hand relax. And if you like, using the right hand to slowly bring the head back up to center. And again, just feel into the right side of the body, left side of the body. And feel free to take a movement and you need to shrug your shoulders, move any other part of the body, you're welcome to do so. Adjust your legs if you've been seated. Right. Um, the last time I joined the group, we talked about beauty and I was struggling a bit to, I still don't know this, but how exactly to define beauty. And part of what we'd said was like, oh, it's a form of love. And gratitude to me is maybe part two of that. <laughs> it's also another form of love. And so I'll share a little bit about why it's like, oh, it might be interesting to talk about gratitude. And um yeah, we'll, we'll see where that takes us. So I'm going to, let me see if I can do this. Can you all see that? Yes, maybe. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'll just share. So for me, um, I can't quite remember uh, sort of like what um, initiated or triggered this, but this was several years ago. I Actually, I do think I remember now, now that I'm sharing with all of you. Um, it was it was a pretty bumpy time. And, you know, I was there was suicidal ideation, et cetera, et cetera. I was in graduate school. It was a rough time. And I think someone I was I don't know if it was a therapist or somebody else suggested a gratitude practice. And I think it just started as like, okay, name three things you're grateful for each day. And I just happened to use, uh, it's an electronic sort of journal thing, which, you know, it'll show you, it'll be like, oh, you know, two years ago, you wrote this, six years ago, you wrote this. And it's been kind of really interesting to see how that has then developed, uh, where now I can sort of look back and be like, oh, right, remember when that was happening? Uh, there's also now a lot more sort of like scientific evidence for like, oh, yeah, this this really works. And when we get to the practice part, I'll go into this a little more. But I think what's helpful about it is and it's almost like a battery recharge where, you know, given everything we go through on a day-to-day -day basis in our personal lives, in our collective lives, having this sort of more formal gratitude practice is just a moment of inviting, like, okay, can I turn my attention to something that brings a little lightness in my life? Can I turn my... Uh, attention to absorbing some of the goodness that is also in the world. Uh, so we'll we'll go into, I'll, I'll share a poem and then we'll go into practice. Um, but here's a, and that the, the things we're grateful for, you know, they can, sometimes they're the simplest things as many of you have already shared in your 
what you're celebrating. Um, the, yeah, they can be they can be very simple things. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna share a poem, and this is similar to what I was saying, right? Like gratitude is a form of love. It's called The Patience of Ordinary Things by Pat Schneider. It is a kind of love, is it not? How the cup holds the tea, how the chair stands sturdy and four square, how the floor receives the bottoms of shoes or toes, how soles of feet know where they're supposed to be. I've been thinking about the patience of ordinary things, how clothes wait respectfully in closets and soap dries quietly in the dish and towels drink the wet from the skin of the back and the lovely repetition of stairs. And what is more generous than a window? And so one of there's there's many pieces now to what you know scientifically how gratitude practice works. But one of the things uh, I've heard a few times, and I do sense that it does make a difference, is to be specific. And so an example I could give is, you know, if we say I'm I'm grateful for the sunshine or the sunrise, to be a little more descriptive. So I might say. You know, I'm really grateful that as I was walking outside in the morning and the sun was rising, the very particular orange or peach that the sky was, or the way that the lines of the clouds lit up in these oranges and pinks as the sun came up. So I think I think you get a sense. So you're just trying to be a little more specific. So we'll take a moment and just do this a little more formally. And so Come into a comfortable position again. It can be seated, standing, laying, whatever works for you. For some of us, it might work to just do this in our mind. For some of us, sometimes it's, it's a little easier if you write or type. So you, you, you'll have a sense, I think, of what might work better for you. As you've settled in, just take a moment to Pick that one thing you're grateful for today. And whatever it is, try to be a little more descriptive, right? So I think if I remember correctly, someone shared, you know, how they were grateful for their friend's babies, the, the arrival of their friend's baby. And so you might, you know, connect to, was it something about the, you know, maybe particular sounds or particular touch or feel of this little baby uh, or maybe just in your heart knowing the joy that this friend has out of this little one in their life okay, whatever it is you've picked and again it can be you know many of us named like sunshine we named we have a home or making our home cozy so there's no right or wrong thing to pick here but I would invite you just pick one for the purpose of this practice. Just pick one thing. Describe it in a way that reminds you of the specifics of this particular that particular experience and the gratitude associated with it. And then for a moment, try and keep that experience, whatever that experience is, just hold that in the forefront of your mind. And as you hold that, so it's sort of like, that's almost like the object of our meditation, if you will. Once you feel like you, you have a strong connection to whatever the experience was that's bringing this sense of gratitude, See if you can sense what it feels like in your body. And this will be different for each one of us. Again, there's no right or wrong. You're just checking in with your own body. For me, I it tends to show up mostly in my chest. You know, so it may sort of be almost like this, almost like a tingling. Sometimes it shows up in my face or the cheeks as this sort of, um, maybe like a warmth. 
So check in with your own body. Sometimes for some of us, it can show up in the belly. It's almost even to the point where you might hear a gurgling in your belly. There could be, again, tingling or warmth, maybe in the fingertips and the toes. So for yourself, so keep that, that experience of gratitude. Keep that in your mind's eye. And then just check in with the body. Where do you feel? What's the felt sense of that experience of gratitude? And just notice, so this is it's just information for us. Like, oh, this is how my body taps into that energy. And if you have a good connection with that energy, again, thinking of it as this sort of, it's almost like a battery recharge or this um, a, a pool. It's like a vitality pool that we can plug into whenever we need. If you're someone who connects with the body pretty well, or if sort of visualizations work for you, if you can tap into where you feel it in the body, have the sense of that energy, whether it's that tingling, whether it's for some of us, you may experience it as colors, however you experience it, see if it's possible to spread it throughout the body. So from the chest or the face or the belly, I have a sense that, oh, this, this felt sense of gratitude, can it extend into other parts of the body, into the arms, into the back, into the legs? And we'll just stay with that for a moment or two. And again, remember, there's no right or wrong. If at any point you feel like, oh, I, I'm not sure if I can feel it anymore, just try and remind yourself, what was that experience that you were grateful for? And again, just remembering to be a little more specific. What were the, the colors, the sights, the sounds, the touch, whatever may be associated with the experience? From there, we'll slowly start to come back. And just come back to your breath. You may come back to wherever your body is touching the ground. Just feel the firmness of the ground below you. If your eyes are closed, you can open your eyes. And if you need moving the body again, I'll just check in with folks if there's anyone who wants to share. Um, not so, so not so much about the experience that brought us gratitude, but the other part of it. What did that feel like in the body? What did it feel like to sort of tap into that as a source of um, replenishment or source of energy? And also that you know maybe you can say actually it didn't work. It was a little hard, or I tapped into it for a moment and then struggled to connect. And feel free to either share with your voice um, audibly or also in the chat, whichever feels more comfortable. Let's check in with time here. Um,
Yeah, maybe I'll just share a couple more thoughts uh, and then we can maybe open it up to see what folks want to share. The gratitude in terms of Buddhist practice is interesting. I'll say generally what I've heard from my teachers is uh, either, well, technically the Buddha didn't talk about gratitude <laughs> uh, or they'll call on for those of us who might be familiar with the four uh, the four heart qualities the four brahma viharas so the third one mudita appreciative joy um i'm i'm not a scholar so i can't say for sure what you know how good or bad a translation that is I will say just for practical purposes and like, does it work in practice and does it work, can it work for our lives? I think, yes, that relationship between gratitude and appreciative joy. And so that, you know, that again, that sense of like, oh, it's an open heart. And one of the ways I've heard the Brahma Vihara is described is it's sort of like when an open heart or a uh, an open loving heart when it encounters something neutral right that's when metta arises you wish you you as well wishing when an open loving heart encounters the pain and suffering of the world then compassion arises right you wish for the pain and suffering to end when a loving open heart encounters the beauty of the world then there's mudita or what in our right now what we're working with in terms of gratitude so the in terms of having that formal practice of gratitude is sort of this feedback loop, right? Because the more gratitude we can feel, the more open and loving the heart can feel. The more open and loving the heart can feel, the more it's able to appreciate the beauty in the world. So it's sort of this, um, if, if we can tap into it, it's like this mega battery, right? Like that can go in this feedback loop and you can really, really recharge. Um, there, there's a way in which, so, you know, because I talked about the Brahma Viharas, right? So there's metta, compassion, um, mudita, appreciative joy, gratitude. And then the last one sort of being equanimity. There's a way in which gratitude can help us maybe come to equanimity, right? So given um, given the amount of pain and suffering there is in our personal lives, in our world collectively, when we start to feel run down, when we start to feel that the despair is taking over, when we start to feel that it's hopeless, the gratitude can sort of counter that, right? So it's those reminders of well, what's beautiful in the world? Where can I draw my energy from? And in that way, gratitude can sort of help bring the equanimity up as it sort of helps balance the scale. Like I can see what's wrong in the world and I can also see what's beautiful. And when I can be at peace with that, if you will, um, or maybe not at peace, but if I can be, if I can hold that paradox, like here's, all the heaviness and here's all the beauty then i can have a little more equanimity and equanimity not as in a detached oh i don't need to engage with it but equanimity as a sort of like can i stay stable in myself the more stable i am in myself then i know okay if this is what's happening here's what i can do that's actually useful whether that's for my activism, for my own personal health, looking after myself. There's a, I'll end with a, or I'll, I'll share a Taoist story and then a poem, and then we can open up. There's a, this is an old Chinese story. There's, there's many versions of it. One of the ones I've heard is, there's this elderly farmer in the countryside, and one day, this horse arrives on his farm, this is a beautiful stallion. And so his neighbors come over and they're like, oh my goodness, this is great, like such good fortune. This horse just, you know, you just acquired this horse. 
And the farmer says, good or bad, I don't know. Then a week or two later, this horse runs away and runs away with uh, one of the farmer's other horses. So the, the neighbors come by again and they're like, oh no, this is terrible. Like not only did that horse go away, it took this other horse away with it. So now you've lost two horses. And again, the farmer says, oh, good, bad, I don't know. Then the horse comes back, they both come back. And so everyone's like, oh, look, the horses came back. One day the farmer's son is riding the, the stallion and his son falls off the horse and breaks his leg. And so again, all the neighbors come by and they're like, oh no, this is terrible. This horse has brought nothing but trouble. Now it's broken your son's leg. And so again, the farmer says, oh, good or bad, I don't know. A little while later, the state has gone to war and so all the young men are being um are becoming soldiers to go fight and so the army comes by the village to collect all the young men and they come to the father's house the, to the farmer's house but they can't take his son because he's uh he, he has this injured leg and so again the the neighbors come by and they're like oh look <laughs> your son didn't have to go to war and so again, the farmer says, oh, good, bad, I don't know. So anyhow, this that sense of equanimity being more about, um, can I see the waves of these events coming and going, but also this sense, maybe for the gratitude, maybe the sense of openness, can I be open to the possibility of, I don't know what this is going to bring? Um there's when it's how do I want to say this the things that bring us joy or beauty almost immediately there those are easier to be grateful for right it's the things that are more gnarly or the things that we don't understand or don't make sense how can we be grateful for those and recently I saw it was part of a forgiveness practice, but the invitation being given was the same thing, that can I see these things that happen to me that I sort of take as bad or harmful? Can I open to the possibility of gratitude for them? And when I first saw it, I was like, oof, this, is, this seems a little rough. And... I, over time, as I sat with it, I was like, well, okay, maybe I can see this. And so an example I can share is um, a few months ago, I was bitten by a dog and it was it was awful. Right? Like I couldn't use my hand. I had to go back to the emergency room like two or three times, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and at the same time, I had like community, like people who... I just knew peripherally as friends who just really came in and were like, oh, Indrani, let me, do you need food? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? And those friendships have really blossomed in a way that I'm not sure they would have had I not had that moment of need. And so now, right now that it's like four months later, <laughs> yes, I can look back and be like, oh, you know what? Actually, maybe some good came out of that incident. Um so yeah, so just this invitation of like what are that gratitude doesn't necessarily always have to be for the things that immediately make us feel good. Can I open to the, you know, in the Zen tradition, what they sort of call the donor mind or the beginner's mind? Can I bring that to other experiences so that I can have that sense of gratitude of like, oh, okay, this has happened. The horse ran away with another horse. I don't know. I really don't know what's going to come of it. Or the horse threw my son onto the ground. My son has broken his leg. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'll read us one more poem and then let's check in with each other.
This poem is, it's called The Way It Is by Lynn Unger. One morning you might wake up to realize that the knot in your stomach has loosened itself and slipped away, and that the pit of unfilled longing in your heart had gradually and without your really noticing been filled in, patched like a pothole, not quite the same as it was, but good enough. And in that moment, it might occur to you that your life, though not the way you planned it, and maybe not even entirely the way you wanted it, is nonetheless persistently, abundantly, miraculously exactly what it is. So I know we have a few more minutes together, so I'll just open it up. Um, any thoughts or reflections folks want to share? Any questions? Yes, I'll get the I'll sh I'll share the both poems. Sorry, I, I typically do this, but I forgot to do it this time. I'll share a link uh, so that you can have access to the poems. Yeah.